Hello, Sinead. Hello, Michael. You are a philosophical practitioner from Denmark. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, you work in the health sector mm -hmm. in different fields with different projects. Could you tell us a bit more about what you are doing? Mm -hmm. My interest has basically two lanes. Uh, one lane is the medical clinical ethics lane where I go to the hospital uh, in Copenhagen and I facilitate uh, moral deliberations with doctors and nurses but also with, uh, with parents of neonates because I work as a clinical ethicist at um, the, new, the NICU at the University Hospital. So that's one lane of interest, how I use a philosophical approach in moral deliberation. And the other lane of interest is working with cancer patients uh, and Socratic dialogue, facilitating Soc Socratic dialogue with uh, people who are coming out of their treatment or who are chronically ill with cancer um, and having um, Socratic dialogue groups with them. What are the topics that you are investigating with a Socratic dialogue with, with these kind of people? I don't decide on the issue that they're going to investigate. Um, what I have set up is we sit down and then we have what I call a first round. And in the first round, I, they basically just tell us, each other, me, what they have been dealing with, uh, what they have been thinking about, life and death issues that, has, that have been triggered by the cancer um, that they experienced. So, and from that, I'm listening in and trying to see, well, what could be the philosophical question here? For instance, if some people, and that's not uncommon, that they feel that they don't recognize their own body, that their body is an enemy because they it contracted cancer, or if they say that they just simply can't understand the situation, they are young, they're in their 30s, they have a family, children, I would then say, well, are you interested in looking at what is justice? Or it could be if they have, they feel alienated by their friends or, you know, their social environment. I could ask, you know, do you want to investigate what is friendship? So it's, it's really where I'm listening to them and trying to throw in different suggestions as for what uh, kind of philosophical question we could examine. How is that uh, with, with the participants of, of your Socratic Dialogues? Um, many philosophical practitioners say that uh, philosophical practice is not a form of therapy or cure. Mm. Now you are working with cancer patients or those who, who had cancer and who just came out from the mm. rehabilitation process. Mm. Um, is there any kind of effect? I don't want to call it benefit, but... Um, mm. Is there anything where you say, okay, this is why these people are joining in? Well, because I, I interview these um, participants afterwards, after the dialogue has ended, and most of them say that what intrigued them and what really made them contact me and want to join a Socratic dialogue group is that it was to look at these issues not from a, a psychological perspective, but from a philosophical perspective. And several of them have said specifically that if we're going to sit there and cry, I'm not interested. So it was really for them to have a different attitude towards their disease and towards their, their life situation. And we end up never, we never talk about, we never discuss their disease. That's really not the, um, the, the, um, the issue. We talk about what lies ahead you know, the life that they're going to live, and because they feel so challenged by the cancer. I mean, they have been threatened uh, to uh, an extreme degree in, in, in all ways you can imagine. How is uh, that approach with the Socratic Dialogues, how is that accepted by your colleagues in that field in the health sector? Is there something very very strange to them or is it something that they really appreciate that, uh, that somebody comes and, and tries to approach cats from a different perspective or different angle so to say? 
I think I would not, I mean, I am financed, my research is financed by the Danish Society of Cancer, and I don't think I would have gotten this grant or the grant that I just received uh, 10 years ago. I think the society is interested in new ways of addressing the issues that they hear coming from the cancer patients. And it's not enough that you address them psychologically. That is also very important. But I make sure that that I don't have anybody in my groups that are suffering from a clinical depression or or have you know serious uh, psychological issues because I'm simply not educated in that field. I cannot help them, um, and they have other avenues. Uh, but I so. To come back to your question, I think I've been received very well um, by the Cancer Society very with a great interest and by my colleagues with sort of um, an intrigue, you know, what is this and what, what exactly are you doing, you know, philosophizing with non-philosophers, uh, it, sounds, it sounds awkward. Mm, let me ask you a bit, in a, in a, in a bit more critical way. Uh, don't you think that your colleagues, um, they see what you do as a kind of treatment again? Yeah, that's the danger. And I make very short, not just to my colleagues, but also to the people in, in, the, uh, in the groups, that what I do is not treatment. I'm not treating them in any way. And that comes out very clearly in my interviews, because one of the things that they kept saying not just in the interviews, but as we were going along in the dialogues, that they did not feel that they were addressed as patients. They felt that they were there just as a private individual. They, they said, you know, I'm the person again. I'm not a, a patient. I'm not a, 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 my social security number, which they feel that they've been reduced to when they were going through treatment. Uh, so in this way, they feel that they can step out and and sort of, be them in that group. What is, what would you say, um, what is the genuine philosophical aspect of these Socratic dialogues? The what philosophical aspect? The genuine, the unique, or what makes the dia your dialogues typically philosophical, so that you can differ between philo philosophical and psychological? Mm. I think there are many things that uh, would differ. One is that you start off with a philosophical question. What is justice or what is friendship or what is loyalty? What is presence? What is control? Those are very philosophical questions. And even though that you pick experiences as a starting point for the more abstract thinking, you do, you do become very abstract in the process. So you, you, you link, like I, I had one participant who said, I have experienced loss because of this cancer. And then I was hearing about other kinds of losses. Um, it could be the loss of a child. It could be the loss of your a limb. It could be many kinds of losses. But the key issue here to investigate is what is loss? So you're not just looking at it from a, a very personal perspective, but you're also bringing it into a much grander uh, perspective. So you say that um, it's, it's on the one hand, it's the, the philosophical questions or that types of questions mm. that you're using, which makes it philosophical. Uh, on the other hand, it's also this movement from the concrete experiences mm. to the more abstract Mm. way of thinking, so to say. Well, there's a dialectic here, and the, the, the focus or the emphasis is really on, on the f philosophical question. So, and, and my experience is that the participants learn these, the rules of dialoguing very fast. You know, I've had participants correcting each other, saying, oh, no, we were not supposed to, to talk like that. That's a psychological aspect. And now we're diverse or digressing. So they pick up on that, the act of philosophizing very, very quickly and prefer to stay on that level, in fact. Okay. I would like to thank you for the interview. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very interesting to hear, about, to, to hear about how to use Socratic dialogue in 
these kinds of settings or these kinds of fields. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.